When we run this time, we will be running on an RTL representation of the design in the Veloce emulator. When we execute this launch configuration, it will initiate an emulation session on Veloce and connect CodeBench Virtual Edition to it. We can immediately begin debugging our software. We can see the source code, registers in the processor and in the RTL, the contents of memory, and variables. We can also set breakpoints. Here I'll set a breakpoint on the function main and run out to the start of the application. We will run through the same tests we ran against the virtual prototype. As you can see, the short FIFO test completes successfully. Next we move on to the multi-packet test. Here we see it succeeds as well. Next we will test the FIFO with a series of random sized data packets. But the 594th random test does not complete as we expect it to. Stepping through the inner loop of the test, we see that the outgoing data is reported as sent correctly, but when we try to read the FIFO, it is empty. If we look at the status register in the FIFO, we can see that the empty flag is not cleared, even though we are clearly writing data to the FIFO. Even if we repeatedly write to the FIFO, this status bit never updates. Although we were able to successfully process over 500 random data packets, something went wrong with this one. It appears that the hardware is locked up for some reason. Now we need to look at what's going on in the hardware. Veloce gives us that visibility. This is the waveform view from the emulation. The cursor, the vertical line in the center of the window, allows us to correlate the state of the software with a point in time in the hardware. Moving down to the signals on the FIFO, we see that there is no activity after the failing test. Looking earlier in the emulation, we can observe the data from the short test and the multi-packet test flow through the peripheral. We can also see the FIFO seam to lock up. Interestingly, there is an interrupt to the processor which occurs at about the same time that the FIFO stops working. Back in CodeBench, we can see that there is an interrupt service routine in the application. When it is triggered, it does make an access to the FIFO's control registers. This might be contributing to the cause of our problem. Further investigation will require looking at the HDL of the FIFO itself. The hardware team examined the HDL and found that there was a register which was sized too small. It was overflowing and locking up the FIFO in the unusual circumstance that the interrupt occurred exactly when the FIFO was full. Increasing the size of this register should fix the problem. With the HDL for the FIFO fixed, we can rerun the tests and see if everything is now working correctly. We will once again choose the launch configuration, which will initiate an emulation session and run the software on the HDL representation of the design in Veloce. CodeBench Virtual Edition connects to the emulator and allows us to begin debugging as before. This time we will place a breakpoint at the end of the tests and see if we successfully run everything. Even though we ran all these tests with the virtual prototype earlier, we did not see this problem as it was an RTL coding error. It is important to be able to run the same software against different levels of abstraction of the hardware as the design progresses. Here we see that we are able to completely run all of the tests successfully.